So in the previous class, we have already discussed some of the key points or the tips and tricks for the calculation of various calculations which are involved in JEE and NEET competitive examinations. Today in front of you, I am again going to discuss some of the important tips for the calculation of effective nuclear charge for an atom. You know what does effective nuclear charge stands for? So for every element in the periodic table, it has some charge to attract the electron pair. So those pair of electrons, the capacity to attract the pair of electron will be decided by effective nuclear charge. Means nucleus will possess some of the charge to attract the outermost shell of the electrons. So if the charge is more, automatically you cannot remove the electrons from that shell. If charge is less, automatically the removal of electron becomes more and more. And this concept is somewhat related to your ionization enthalpy. This effective nuclear charge as we move from left side to the right side of the periodic table, it goes on increasing. So there are some calculation various methods, right, to calculate effective nuclear charge. But today we will discuss some of the very simple tricks to calculate how the effective nuclear charge can be calculated for any electron present in any orbital. Therefore, the heading would be the effective nuclear charge. Usually this is denoted as, as Z star, right? Usually denoted as what? Z star. To calculate Z star students, you might be knowing this formula. Z star is equal to Z minus sigma. Using this formula, you can calculate Z star effective nuclear charge. It is unitless quantity. Here, Z is nothing but atomic number and sigma is screening constant. screening constant. You have to first calculate sigma, then substitute, subtract from the atomic number, then immediately you get Z star, that is effective nuclear charge. We call it as ENC, that is effective nuclear charge. Let us begin. Some tips I will give you how to calculate sigma. Then you can substitute from the atomic number of that element, you get Z star, right? First for this one, we require, we have to group of the orbitals. Grouping of orbital is very important. Therefore, the first step is a grouping of orbitals. First step is grouping of orbitals. We will group this one. We will group as 1s separately, 2s and 2p separately, 3s and 3p separately and 3d separate. I will not include 3d here. Actually, I should include, but for my calculation, I will take it separately, 3d. Then we have 4s and 4p. Then we have 4d. Like this, we go on grouping this one, then we come across again 4f, right? Like this, we have to group of the orbitals. This is called as grouping of orbitals. Once you group it out, then there are some mathematical values you need to <coughs> remember for the calculation of effective nuclear charge. For example, the electron which you want to test, right? For example, there are 10 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let us assume these are the electrons. You want to verify the effective nuclear charge for the ninth electron. Means the effective nuclear charge, that is screening constant you want to calculate. The screening constant for ninth electron you can calculate. And right side of this electron doesn't have any effect. Because you know screening effect or that effective nuclear charge is produced by remaining nine electrons or eight electrons which are present inside. Means we consider only eight electrons for our study. Then the next tenth electron which is the right side. Right side there may be hundred electrons. That effect we won't consider. Right side of the test electron is, effect is completely zero. Therefore, ninth electron is there. Now, this electron is supposed to be called as what? Test electron for which you want to calculate screening constant. For example, you want to calculate for eighth electron, then two other electron, zero effect because they are on right side. Then remaining seven electron will count. This is what the sum calculation. Therefore, I write here, the electron which I want to test, let me call it as a test electron, right side to test electron right side to test electron, no effect. Right side to test electron, there is no effect at all, okay? Once if this is done, if an electron, test electron is present in, right? It is present in ns and np orbital. If it is present in ns and np orbital, then you have to add the value of 0 0.35 each for each electron. If your electron is present in NS and NP, 
then you have to take 0 0.35 each except if it is present in 1s for 1s this is it is 0 0.3 this is only for hydrogen and helium not for any other element this is special case this is the special case for remaining electron if you test electron for example if you want to test the electron for helium that is 1s2 here two electrons are there for example if you want to test for last electron this electron is present here you have to take 0 0.3 only does not take 0 0.35 because for 1s orbital for hydrogen and helium you have to take the value of 0 0.3 each then this is okay if your electron is present in n minus 1 subshell for all, all n minus 1 here also you should take 0 0.85 each for each electrons you should take 0 0.85 for each electron if it is present in n minus 2 then you have to take one each right you have to take one each this is applicable only when your electrons are present in ns and np if it is present in ns and np remaining all electron you have to take as 0 0.35 next orbital electron before orbital electron 0 0.35 85 then n minus 2 orbital you have to take as one each this is only when your electrons are present in ns and np for example 3s 3p 2s 2p 4s 4p here if your electrons are there imagine if your electron is present in 3p this becomes ns here two electrons are there means 2 into 0 0.35 these two electrons becomes these two orbital becomes n minus 1 here 0 0.85 then this orbital become 1 therefore like that calculation will proceed this is one calculation another one i would write over here right i will wipe out and write if your electron is present in nd and nf if your electron is present in nd and nf orbital then you have to take here 0 0.35 each 0 0.35 each and for all inner electrons for all inner electrons you have to take one each how for example i will write it as 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 then 3d 10 is there i want to calculate for 10th electron right this is ns for all these electron you have to take 0 0.35 these all electrons are inner electron for these you have to take 1 1 into 6 plus 2 plus 2 total 10 therefore like this the calculation will proceed these are the some points what you need to remember if your test electron is present in ns and np for remaining all electrons of ns and np you have to take 0 0.35 each n minus 1 you have to take 0 0.85 each and n minus 2 you have to take 1 each if your test electron is present in nd and nf orbital then remaining electrons you should take 0 0.35 each for all inner electrons you have to take one each these are the some tips you have to remember to calculate screening constant once you've done the screening constant you can substitute in the equation z star is equal to z minus sigma sigma you already calculated then you can easily calculate z star one by one they say we will take out the examples okay so i have brought some questions for you people right let us verify how the screening constant can be calculated and as well as the effective nuclear charge so if you want to calculate except hydrogen and helium as already told then if i want to calculate for lithium atomic number you know three electronic configuration can be written as 1s2 2s1 for example you want to calculate for this electron is the test electron test electron you should neglect therefore the calculation becomes very simple here i would write sigma is equal to 0 into 0 0.35 because this is ns 0 0.35 test electron 0 right into right then what you will do 2 into this is n minus 1 for n minus 1 how to take 0 0.85 correct for this orbital this orbital is 1 therefore here 2 this is n this becomes n minus 1 in n minus 1 how many electrons are there 2 each of 0 0.85 therefore the calculation of sigma becomes final calculation you ended with 1.7 this is your sigma that is screening constant how to calculate z star then it is z minus sigma here z is 3 minus 1.7 your z star would be what 1.3 would be the z star like this way you can easily calculate for lithium okay then we go for the another element next period element same we go for beryllium okay beryllium we will check right beryllium what would you expect as we move from lithium to beryllium beryllium to boron right effective nuclear charge should increase the value must be greater than 1.3 we will verify okay beryllium atomic number is 4 electronic configuration is 1s2 
2s2 correct 1s2 and 2s2 now what i want to do i want to calculate for this last electron so here if you calculate sigma is equal to i write 1 into 0.35 see why i have taken 1 because out of 2 1 is a test electron remaining is one electron it is present in ns orbital therefore 1 into 0.35 plus this becomes n minus 1 2 into 0.85 final calculation with the calculator it becomes 2.05 therefore if you want to calculate z star that is a 4 minus 2.05 answer would be 1.95 that is the value of effective nuclear charge for beryllium compare compare the lithium and beryllium here the removing of electron is very easy because effective nuclear charge is just 1.3 here removing the electron becomes very difficult and also it is a stable electronic configuration and effective nuclear charge is more removing of electron becomes much more difficult that's why as we move from lithium to beryllium the effective nuclear charge is 1.95 therefore i would write over here somewhere then i will check for remaining elements okay then i will check for remaining elements so students so i have got for lithium i got it as 1.3 for beryllium i got 1.95 we go for boron and check okay what is for boron boron you know atomic number 5 you get 1s2 2s2 2p1 i want to calculate for this electron what is the effect okay i call sigma screening constant this is zero because the test electron left side now we want to calculate 2 into 0.35 because it is ns orbital plus 2 into 0.85 final sigma you would get it as 2.4 when you calculate z star it is 5 minus 2.4 answer nearly you get it as 2.6 that is z star see that's why i told now i write here boron you got it as 2.6 that's why we if we move along the period for lithium to beryllium beryllium to boron effective nuclear charges suddenly increases therefore along the period size will decrease now we will calculate for zinc okay yes two so this is the electronic configuration now i want to calculate for the last electron that is sigma for the last electron i want to calculate therefore i take 1 into 0.35 plus 1 into 0.35 this becomes n minus 1 in n minus 1 how many electrons are there total 10 plus 6 plus 2 18 therefore it is 18 into 0.85 plus this is n minus 2 all are n minus 2 only therefore it becomes how much 10 into 1 so once you do the calculation sigma you would get it as 25.65 this is the value of sigma you get it then if you substitute and calculate z star it is 30 minus 25.65 then the answer for z star you would get it as 4.35 this is the z star value for which electron 4s electron okay now what i do i calculate it for 3d orbital electron this is for 4s okay i'll calculate for right i will calculate for which electron now i want to calculate for 3d electron so as i told it is right side this is no effect right side of the test electron no effect at all okay right side of the test electron no effect therefore what i do here 10 electrons are there therefore i calculate sigma is equal to 9 into 0.35 why you take because one is test electron remaining if you consider one test electron remaining 9 9 into 0.35 then for all inner electrons you take it as 18 into 1 for all inner electrons you take it as 18 into 1 then you calculate sigma you get the answer as 21.15 therefore z star you get it as 30 minus 21.15 you get z star is equal to answer as 8. 85 as an answer now you see look into the value for z star of 4s and 3d that's why you can remove the electron from 4s orbital of zinc but you cannot remove the electrons from 3d orbital of zinc because a sudden increase in the effective nuclear charge that's why students 
as and when you remove the last electron the power of the nucleus increases it pulls or it attracts the remaining electrons stronger towards itself because of effective increase in the effective nuclear charge i hope this calculation will help you to solve some of the competitive examinations of questions of a neat and a jwe part this is the very simple shortcuts right to calculate the effective nuclear charge i hope you liked the video if you like it please do comment and share thank you